Okay, so this is another video I've made um, because the other video that I have on factors and multiples and GCF and LCM, as I'll we'll explain later, um, uses factor trees and some people have difficulty using factor trees. So this is another method you could use which um, works just the same. And I think it's kind of more common sense and I, when I do this stuff, I prefer using this method in this video I'm going to explain right here. So, um, yeah. Uh, you're allowed to use a times table grid for, for any stuff in this course, so you might um, want to have handy your own times table grid. The one that I have here is a 20 by 20 grid. Of course, the thing with grids is that they're only as good as the numbers that they have in it, so 400 is the highest number um, here. And so um, they do kind of limit you here and there, but uh, it's still, for most of the numbers that we use in grade 8, this should be fine. Anyways, what are factors. Factors are numbers that when multiplied give you that number. Or what are the numbers that go into another number? So in this case we're talking about the number 8. What are the factors of the number 8? Well, what are the numbers that when multiplied, what whole numbers when multiplied give us 8? Well, I know that 1 does because 1 times, 1 goes into everything. Okay, so 1 is a factor of every single whole number. Um, and we know that 1 times 8 gives us 8, so we know that 8 is also a factor of 8. The nice thing about that is that factors, uh, like, for example, any number greater than 8 cannot be a factor of 8. That's the highest we can go. So eight, that kind of gives us our limit. 9 is not a factor of 8. It's only numbers that are less than 8, or 8 itself, that can be factors of 8. So let's just go through, starting from 1 all the way up to 8. Is 2 a factor of 8? Yes, it is, because 2 times 4 gives us 8. So 4 also works. We don't know about 3 yet, so we'll leave a space and put 4 right here. Is 3 a factor of 8? Um, no, it's not, because 3 times no other number gives us 8, so 3 is not a factor. 4 is, we just figured that out, is 5. 5 times a 5 times something does not give us 8. 6, not going to work. Nope. 7, not going to work. So these are your factors of 8. Okay, that's just, I just got that from common sense, just knowing the times tables. If you are a little fuzzy on your times tables, here's a way to use the times table grid to figure out what the factors of 8 are. So here's all these columns, and if you have 8 in your column, then you are a factor of 8. Here's 1, and it's got an 8. So that means 1, yes, is a factor of 8. Is 2 a factor of 8? Bing! Yes, it is. Is 3 a factor of 8? No, it's not. 4? Bing! Yes, it is. 5? Nope. 6? Nope. 7? Nope. 8? Bing! Yes, it is. Same answer. 1, 2, 4, and 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8 are factors of 8. All right, let's step it up here. 48. Let's list the factors of 48. What are they? Well, 1 is the lowest one. By the way, 0. What do you think about 0? Because 0 times 0, I guess, is technically a factor as well. Um, but let's not get into that. That's more complicated. Um, 1 works. And, of course, 48. So in between 1 and 40, because 1 times 48 is the, uh, I guess, the bookends of our factors, the low end and the high end. Does 2 work? Well, it's an even number. So the divisibility rule for 2, for 2 to go into a number, it has to be even. So if it's even, 2 can go into it. Does 3 go into 48? If you're not sure, I'll show you a trick. This only works for 3s. This only works for 3s. If you want to know if a 3 can go into a number, what you do is, if it's a big number, not that 40 it's a huge number, but, you know, still. If you're not sure if, uh, if 3 can go into a number, what you do is you take the number, you add the two numbers up, 4 and 8, and, you give, and it gives you 12. If 3 can go into that number there, which it does, then it can also go into that number there. So 3 is a factor of 48. Now that little adding trick only works for threes, to figure out if three is a factor of a number. 
Um, does four go into this? Yes, it does. Sorry. Uh, what? This is backwards. Back up to three. What times three gives us forty-eight? Sorry. What times two gives us four? Does even back up even further? What times two gives us forty-eight? Twenty-four does. What times three gives us forty-eight? Sixteen does. What times four gives us twenty-eight? Twelve does. Now let's go all the way up from four. Uh, five, the rules for five is if it ends in a zero or five, it works. It does not, so five will not work. Six does work, because six times eight gives us 48. Seven does not work. Eight I just wrote down. Nine will not work. Ten will not work. Eleven does not work, and there's 12. So there are your factors of 48. You can call, it the, call that the long way, or the thinking way. Using our grid. 48. Let's take a look. How do we use our grid to figure this out? Okay, so we see who has 48 in their row. 1. Now, you think, oh, it doesn't have 48 in a row, but as you can, you know, this grid is only 20 by 20. If it were to go on forever, you can see that it would fit here. Going up by 1s, 48 should fit here. So 1 for sure works. 2. Does, is 48 in this row or in this column? Well, again, it's, it's not shown here, but you know, 38, 40, 42, 46, 48. If we continue this grid on, 48 would work. 3, yes. Bing, it works. 4, bing, it works. 5, nope. 6, bing, it works. 7, nope. 8, bing, it works. 9, nope. 10, nope. 11, nope. 12, Yes, 13, nope, 14, nope, 15, nope, 16, bing, yes, 17, nope, 18, nope, 19, nope, 20, nope. Um, and so the other factor that I've written down on the, on the other page is that 24. Now, of course, 24 is not on here. I guess that's one disadvantage of using the grid. It has limits. Unless you get like a huge massive grid, like a infinity times infinity grid. But using the grid, we get the exact same factors of 48. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 16, 24, and of course 48. <clears throat> okay. So we've been talking about 8 and 48. What are the common factors between 8 and 48? So to do that, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm, I'm instead of rewriting them out, I'm just going to copy and paste in, in just a second. Okay, so I just all I did is I copy and pasted the factors from above instead of rewriting them. Anyways, um, so here's 48's list of factors. There's 8's list of factors. What are the common ones? Well, it's just it's like they're playing fish. 48 says, "Do you have a one?" Eight says, "Yes, I do." 48 says, do you have a 2? 8 says, yes, I do. 48 says, do you have a 3? And 8 says, go fish. Then the 8 says, do you have a 4? Yes, I do. And then it goes on and on. And you can see that 8 is the other common factor. So 1, 2, 4, and 8. 1, 2, 4, and 8 are the common factors between 8 and 48. They're the, the factors that they have in common for both those two numbers. Which brings us to the whole point of this, one of the big points of this video, is figuring out what is the greatest common factor, or GCF, of a pair of numbers. And the way you do it is you list out the factors, like this, using whatever method you want, the grid method or the listing method. And you see which is the biggest number they have in common. What is the greatest number they have in common? Greatest factor they have in common. Well, what's the biggest number here? 8. So the answer is 8. Done. The GCF, or the biggest number, or the greatest common factor between 8 and 48, is 8. Again, another video I showed you a, a, a factor tree method of doing that. Kind of messy. This, it's pretty simple. Okay, let's use that same thinking for 12 and 36. What are the factors of 12 and 36? You can use the grid to get 12, and at 36 it's listing out as factors. 
um, for 12. Again, I don't really care what method you, you're going to use, since I'm kind of sort of good at my times tables, I will uh, just list them out. But again, you can use the grid if you need help. <clears throat> so the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. For 36, they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, Be careful here, I don't want to screw this up. Uh, 9 times 4 works, 3 times uh, 3 times 12, and uh, 4 times 9, uh, nine uh, 2, 18, and uh, 36. Okay, so there you go. Um, what are, what's the greatest common factor between them? What's the biggest number that they have in common between them? Six. So six is the answer. No, actually, I'm wrong. Look at that. I'm wrong. Should have kept on going. Twelve is the answer. Twelve is the greatest common factor between twelve and thirty-six. It's the biggest one they have in common. Now, using the grid, you can do the exact same thing. What is the biggest number that 12 and 36 have in common? So let's check this out. 12 and 36. So what I'm saying is, in which column, what is the biggest column that has both 12 and 36? Um, well, 1's have 12 and 36. Uh, 12 is there. 36 is there. They're common there. 12 is there, 36 is there, 3 is the biggest one so far, 12 and 36 are both in 4, not in 5, 12 and 36 there, doesn't work in 8, doesn't work in 9, 12 and 36 there and that's the only column that has both of them and there's that's the biggest one that's another way to figure out that 12 is the greatest common factor of 12 and 36 using the grid what do they both have in common okay so using whatever method you like you get the answer is 12. okay what if you have triples 18, 36, 54. What's the greatest common factor of those three numbers? Okay, so uh, you could list them out or you can use the grid. Let's just jump to the grid. 18, 36, and 54. So for 18, 36, 54. You could list them out, figure out what it is, or we can use the grid. Let's try the grid. 18, 36, 54. 18, 36, 54. I need to erase this first. I forget those numbers, so I'm just going to just draw it up here. 18, 36, 54. Which has those three numbers in the same column. The biggest number that has those three numbers in the same column. We know that one does. We know that two does because they're all even. So two is our leader so far. Does three. Three has 18. Does it have 36? Yes. Does it have 54? Yes, it does. So three is now our leader. Does four work? No, it doesn't have 18. Five is not going to work. Six, does it have that? Six has 18. Does it have 36? Yes, it does. Does it have 54? Yes, it does. Is there a bigger number? So, so far, leader is 6. Will 7's not going to work? Will 8 work? No, 9. Will 9 work? It's got 18. It's got 36. And it's got 54. So, 9 is our leader so far. The, as the greatest current factor between these three numbers. Anyone else? Another way to do is look. you look at the actual smallest number of this pair. 
That's the cheat way of doing it. And will 18 work? Check it out. 18, 36, 54. 18 is our answer. It is the greatest common factor between 18, 36, and 54. So the answer is 18. You could have got the same way if you listed them all out. Okay, so. Um, what about uh, the, the GCF of 27 and 13? Well, what are the factors of 27? 27 is a factor of 1 and 27. Nothing else goes into it. What about 13? 13 is made up of 1 and 13. So what's the greatest common factor between the, the two numbers? They only have one number in common. It's 1. So it's 1. The answer is 1. Anyways, on to multiples. So what are the multiples of 8? These are the numbers, I guess when you count by 8, what are the numbers? Uh, and multiples can go on forever. So what are the, your 8 times tables, basically? So you list them. 8, 16, 24, 8 times 1, 8 times 2, 8 times 3, 8 times 4, 32, 40, 48, da, 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 go on and on and on. Those are multiples of 8. So that numbers that when you divide by 8 give you a whole number. And then using the grid, you just look in the 8 column and there are all, well not all, up to 20, uh, all the multiples or many of the multiples of 8 right there. Okay, so multiples are easy. Okay, multiples of 8 right there. What about now getting to... Well, the multiples of 12, same thing. If you want to get the multiples of 12, you just square the 12 column, and those are all multiples of 12. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, da, 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 da. Those are your multiples there. Which brings us to the partner of the greatest common factor, the GCF, which is the lowest common multiple, the LCM between 8 and 12. Again, you could list them out. So 8 is made up of 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and 12 is made up of 12, 24, 48, 60, dot, 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 dot. We don't have to go on forever because we're looking for the lowest common multiple. What is the smallest number they both have in common? Um, well, 12, no, 60, no, 24. That's the smallest number that they both have in common. So the listing method will give you 24 as the answer. Could we use that on the grid? Yes, we can. So 8 and 12. What is the smallest number that 8 and 12 both have in, oh, I keep doing this, both have in common? And actually the grid is, it's pretty easy to do this. There's the multiples there of 8, and there's the multiples of 12, which is the smallest one that they both have in common. 8, 12, 24, 24. Pretty easy, isn't it? So the answer, whichever method you want to use, is 24. So what's the LCM of the numbers 2 and 3? The listing method, you list out all the multiples of 2 and 3 and you figure out which one it is, or you can use the grid. Using the grid, let's look at 2 and 3. What's the smallest number that they both have in common? 2, 3, 2, two 6, 6. Smallest number that they both have in common. So the answer is 6. What about a triplet one here? 15, 5, and 30. Now, I don't have 30 on the grid, so um, it won't work. But let's just use the listing method here. 5, 15, 30. What is the smallest number, the smallest multiple, that these three numbers have in common. 
<clears throat> well, let's see your fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. That's an ugly 3, sorry. 40, let's just stop there. 15 is 15, 30, 45, 60, dot, 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 dot. 30 is 30, 60, 90, dot, dot, dot. What's the smallest number they have in common? Did 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 it? 30, 30, 30. 30 is your answer. So, there you go. Another option to use to find greatest common factors and lowest common multiples, GCFs and LCMs. These are the exact same skill testing questions that I had for the factor tree method of doing this. You pick whatever method you like. You like this method, go for it. You like the factor tree method, go for it. As long as you get the right answer, I don't care. There you are. Thank you very much. Goodbye.